Hello class again and welcome to this particular video and in here we're going to be exploring the interior and exterior angles of any specific two dimension shape or figure and that is pretty much the essence of these videos that will be coming out not now but in the next two videos or so so in here we need to recognize maybe some of you might recognize this scene from a specific movie and you see various planes and line relationships and all those lines intersecting forming different angles and those manipulation was really cool to see on the big screen by the way the name of the movie is dr strange and what we see is the combination of different dimension of multiverse and all that stuff but all those actually comes into play when dealing with the relationship between lines which with respect to various measurements of angles and the bell work looking at it for this particular video here is to explore the properties of two dimension figure which is pretty much part one in here and our goal is that you should be able to determine the sum of the interior angles that make up that particular two dimension shape and apply the exterior angle and interior angles to any polygon polygons are any sides that have more than three or equal to three sides and that is really one thing that you need to relate to the angles and the sides of that particular polygon so in this particular part we're going to look at various big ideas and these big idea questions look at it by the left side of the screen we see a specific shape which in this case is recognized to be a regular 12 gun which means here that all sides all 12 sides are equal which means that the angle made between lines interiorly are actually the same which means it has 12 interior angles and 12 exterior angles so in here we're asked here to determine the measure of that one exterior angle which is represented as e that is what i challenge you all to actually do and closer to the end of this video we are going to address that particular question alongside this case two question which involves determining an unknown side which is represented as s or you can represent it as the angle d e c in that particular relationship between lines in there so we need all those skills to be able to answer those questions and the skills involves the following we have to find first what is the angle on a straight line and to determine that we have a straight line already set up already there and if you place a protractor on that particular side or line we measure the angle made from one end to the other end the angle made is actually 180 degrees which is what you should remember so if i place any multiple lines on that particular line in this case we have an orange line and we're given a specific angle which in this case is represented as alpha and we're asked to determine what gamma is we can determine that knowing that the sum of all sides or sorry the sum of all angles that form a straight line is indeed equal to a hundred and eighty degrees so therefore in this case we see that once we add all our angles they must sum up to be a hundred and eighty degrees so once we have that taken care of we're going to build on this skill to a much more interesting skill in here which is what if the angle with two or more lines intersect so what does that mean here so in here if we have a straight line already established we know that the angle made from one straight line and to the other end is actually 180 degrees but then we have another line that intersects that specific line which in this case is the orange line and we're given a specific angle which is represented as beta and we are given another angle or you can determine that angle to be alpha which is 180 minus beta in here we're going to be asked to determine the other angles that are surrounding that intersect point and this is where corresponding angle concept comes in corresponding angles which means here that opposite angle size are actually equal which means that our first opposite angle side is the one that is directly facing it 
if you can just draw a line that goes all the way down from the angle it may say that gamma is actually equal to alpha in this case for corresponding angles while on the other side the beta angle that is opposite space or angle to beta is in this case corresponding angle to be measured as theta and that is actually the corresponding angle relationship now remember here that if you sum up the angles that forms the orange line that is actually indeed equal to 180 degrees alongside looking at it from the other side as well take note that the angle at a point is equal to 360 degrees so if i add 180 to 180 i will get the angle at a point which is equal to 360 degrees so in here we have another case scenario where we have a straight line and not only we have one line intersecting but also we have another line intersecting at that same point which means here that if for example i'm giving beta here and we are also giving another angle which is gamma here sometimes you might be given this angle here or sometimes you might be asked to determine what that angle is to determine what that proper angle is right there of course you recognize that the first orange line starting from beta here is actually a straight line which means that if you sum up all the angles here it must be equal to 180 degrees therefore to determine q in this case what we have to do is just to subtract the sum of the beta and gamma from 180 degrees and you'll be able to get q now therefore if you're asked to determine the corresponding angles what we have to do looking at it from the beta perspective is the angle space that is directly opposite to that particular side will automatically give us the corresponding angle and you can see the relationship between the first orange line and the blue line going in from that particular beta space so therefore we recognize that theta is actually the corresponding angle to beta now the other one here is what if you're asked to determine the other one right here therefore we found that <laughs> in this case gamma is actually corresponding to alpha and finally we know that the angle that is directly opposite to that of q is what we recognize to be the angle side c in this case so therefore c angle is corresponding to that of q which means that all those angles there they are equal so that is it in here for looking at the angle relationship with two or more lines intersecting at a straight line so next case here is what if you're given parallel lines with a transverse line so one case here is we see these two orange lines and we don't know whether these two lines are actually parallel to each other and we have these other two blue lines and we recognize that or we don't recognize yet that those two lines as well are parallel to each other so the big question is how can you indeed identify those two lines as parallel compared to the orange ones in here once you see this particular symbol with the two arrows that shows the relationship between the two lines that tells us that indeed those two lines in this case the blue lines are parallel to each other not the two orange lines on the right side of the screen so therefore now to introduce a transverse line it means that any line that crosses two or more parallel lines that particular line is called a transverse line that means that there is an angle relationship that is really important to recognize first off let's look at what the corresponding angles are in this particular relationship between the parallel lines and the transverse lines so what we see here is that if you're giving beta right here and we want to find the corresponding angle to the first parallel line and that orange line from beta here the corresponding angle in this case is theta of course so therefore we found the first corresponding angle and if we want to find the other corresponding angle that leads to the second 
parallel line to the same traverse line looking at it from the better perspective we actually see that it is the same position as the first line to the orange line so therefore the same space location is identified in there as b so therefore beta is actually equal to b always you can check it to your protractor and you will see that it is the same measurement right there and how about theta and we're looking for a space on the second line with the orange line location and what we see is the same space as the theta which in this case is labeled as c so theta is actually equal to c which is corresponding angle right there and now how about we're given alpha and gamma in here and we're asked to find the other corresponding angle to the second parallel line so what we see is that therefore that our beta which we've already determined to be b in this case our alpha is corresponding to a and our gamma is corresponding to d so in this case those angle relationships are equal to create a corresponding angle now on the other side if you have an alternate angle alternate angles are usually highlighted as the z dimension or pattern so in this particular case once you look at this particular figure in here that shows the parallel lines to the traverse line we see a z relationship which is seen as this green highlighted line right there so that z tells you that each edge measurements are actually equal so therefore in this case our gamma and a has the same angle measurements which we recognize right here so therefore gamma is indeed equal to a so how about any other z measurement or z pattern that you recognize in here we see another z pattern right here which where we see the dark green line that crosses from the theta all the way to the b therefore in this case the angle that we see that is common or alternate angles that are equal in this case are the theta and b therefore b and theta are actually equal in this particular case right here so what you need to recognize here is that for you to achieve the z pattern you must have two parallel lines and a traverse line relationship right there so the top side of your z represents your parallel line first one then your traverse line is the one line that connects the first parallel line to the second parallel line and the second parallel line is the other end of the z pattern right there where that is what you need to recognize and the edge on each side of your z is actually equal in this case gamma and a and theta theta and b so now we have all the three skills established we're going to apply this to various questions in here so in here the question here is to find the interior angles of the given exterior angles in this case we see parallel lines on the left side of the screen how do you know they are parallel lines we have the arrows that shows that those two lines are parallel on the left side of the screen and now we don't have one but two traverse lines actually intersecting at a specific point on the first parallel line and we have two different locations that are actually intersecting at the second parallel line now we're going to highlight various points on this particular i'll say figure we have point a which is that intersect point and we have c and we have b and we recognize in here that the length of a c is actually equal to that of a b and also equal to c b as represented as those single stroke lines on the mid 
point of those two lines or the three lines right there so that is a huge recognition that those lines are actually equal to each other so the question here is given these particular exterior angles which shows that we have 60 degrees on both ends of around a and around c how will you determine the interior angles of that particular triangle that we notice right there we have a c d b sorry so in this case the goal here is to be able to find the interior angles from the exterior angles given and interior angles in here can be solved by actually first finding what a b and c is and once you have that at the back of your mind the next goal here is to actually find all corresponding angles first we know that corresponding angles not only relate to a specific point intersect on its first parallel line but also in relation to the second parallel line so in this case we have to first find our c point right there and determine what that angle is in that particular case right there so for c what we see is that that is the corresponding angle to the 60 degrees that is on the other end of that particular c location so therefore c we've actually determined the angle to be equal to 100 oh sorry 60 degrees now how about for the next angle which is location point a so in this case here what we see is that there is a corresponding angle which is our gamma in there to be equal to 60 degrees and once we have that recorded and put that right there we will need that to determine what the triangle a angle is so once we have that let's look at b and what we see in point b is that the corresponding angle for beta actually relates to the gamma 60 degrees right there and what we notice that gamma is equal to beta in this case because they are corresponding angles relating the two parallel lines to that specific traverse line we can actually recognize that beta is actually equal to 60 degrees as we notice right there now how about finding alternate angles which means we are looking for our z pattern so looking for our z pattern we notice one to be this purple line right here in this case once we see that our c is equal to 60 degrees the first edge of that z which is around the a point is actually going to be equal to 60 degrees coming from that particular case so therefore alpha is going to be in this case equal to 60 degrees and then how about any other z pattern that we can create right here there is another one right here as well and what we see is that there's a relationship between the b angle and the gamma angle which is equal to 60 degrees so since gamma is 60 degrees therefore our b is already determined to be equal to 60 degrees so therefore in this case we've not only found our c but our b angle in this case now what is left is our a now we recognize that the first parallel line in here is actually a straight line and we have two intersect in that particular point a so therefore in this case since we have two angles given which are the alpha and the gamma however we don't know what a angle is we know that the angle on a straight line is equal to 180 degrees therefore to determine what the unknown space is which is the a we can actually subtract a uh, sum of the 60 degrees to 180 degrees therefore we'll be able to find our a angle which is equal to 60 degrees so therefore in this case our uh, a is given already here to be equal to 60 degrees so therefore in this particular example here we've come to the conclusion that 
since we have our a to be 60 degrees and our b to be 60 degrees and our c to be equal to 60 degrees which are indeed the interior angles of that particular shape which is a three-sided shape we notice that the sum of all interior angles in a three-sided shape or polygon is actually equal to 60 plus 60 plus 60 which is equal to 180 degrees which is really fascinating and important to remember in here because in here we are seeing that even if you have angle A to be smaller than B and B to be bigger than C we can still come to the conclusion that any three-sided polygon shape will always have the sum of the interior angles to be equal to 180 degrees so in this case what we can actually put that into our back of our minds and then apply that same logic to the right side of this particular screen example where we are given two lines that are parallel but the two intersecting lines are not meeting at a point but they just continue from there they are not parallel to each other the two orange lines but we want to see or determine what the interior angles are given the exterior angles take note here that the size or the line length are not equal in this case but they form a four-sided shape and we're asked to find the angle a b c and d so once we're given the exterior angles which on the side of b is 70 degrees and the side of sorry the side of b to be 75 degrees and the side of d to be around 85 degrees how are we going to be able to determine what this space a b d and c so we see that to find one particular location to be 85 degrees but how do we get 85 degrees so the solution here involves first of course we need to find what a b c and d are and in this case we need to first find the corresponding angles that's the first thing to go for because it's easy to take care of those right away so in this case here we notice that for d looking at that bottom left side of that particular shape right there or figure we recognize that since we have 85 degrees on the opposite side of d it means that the corresponding angle is the one that actually matches that space which is automatically given already right there which is awesome so we are given or uh, we've determined our d shape right there and then for a since we know that looking at the a point uh d actually space is related to uh, our first space right there therefore since we recognize that those two lines that are parallel to each other is related to the transverse first orange line right there it means that those spaces their angles are actually equal so therefore alpha is given already to be 85 degrees so that is pretty awesome that we've actually determined that already so in here once we've determined our alpha now our next point is to find alternate angles and alternate angles means i need to create a z pattern which means the connection between two parallel lines and a traverse line you know for we to find the two edges that are actually equal so therefore in this case we see this purple line right here that crosses from b all the way to c and we've come to the conclusion that if we're given 75 degrees at one edge of that particular z pattern which means that the other z edge shape over the space is equal to 75 for the c so therefore since beta is equal to c c therefore is equal to 75 degrees so we've got in 75 degrees over there and now the next point is to be able to determine what a and b are so in this case since we know our d and c now we're going to use relationship of straight lines to determine a and b and in this case what we see is that 
for this looking at a since we have our alpha to be 85 degrees and we know that the straight line in this case is the orange line we can actually determine our other angle which is represented as a so therefore in this case a will be 80 180 degrees minus 85 degrees which gave us our a to be equal to 95 degrees so once we have that taken care of our next point here is to determine what b angle is uh, we recognize that in this case the straight line is actually the blue parallel line which in this case will give us relationship between our straight line and the two angles one angle that is known which is beta to be equal to 75 degrees however the other angle is unknown so therefore since 180 degrees is the sum of all angles on a straight line we can actually determine what b is and b in this case is equal to 105 degrees so therefore in this case we've not only found c and d using first our corresponding angles and our alternate angles but also using the angle on a straight line to identify a and b therefore in this case what we see is that once you add all the angles here that are the interior angles on a four-sided shape we actually see that we actually create a total interior angle of a four-sided polygon to be equal to 360 degrees so remember on our previous example that two three dimension side or three sided polygon gives us 180 degrees for all the sum of the interior angles in this case for a four sided polygon the sum of the interior angles is actually 360 degrees so once we recognize those two patterns right there how about we find a relationship with not only the polygon but to the number of sides the number of triangle created which gives us our x variable our sum of the interior angle which gives us the y variable and the change in the sum of the interior angles for that particular relationship between different shapes right there so our first shape will be a three dimension or oh, sorry a three-sided shape which in this case is called a triangle and what we see is that we have the number of sides to be equal to three and then our next pattern here is to actually find how many triangles we can create from one triangle in this case it's just one we're good from there which is from one edge to the next edge that is facing it so we can't create any more edges here so it's just one triangle so in this case what is the sum of the interior angles as we determine that to be we can either recognize this right off the bat which is 180 degrees or we can multiply the number of triangles by the angle that we're starting off with which is 180 degrees so once we have that we'll be able to get our particular sum of interior angles of a triangle to be 180 degrees now the next shape in here we're going to look at is a four-sided polygon and a four-sided polygon is called a quadrilateral shape so a quadrilateral shape will always have four sides and to determine the number of triangles it means we are drawing one point line to the direct edge line point right here so that is pretty much the diagonal of that particular shape right there so we have triangle one and triangle two so in this case we have two triangles in a quadrilateral so once we have two triangles only in this case we need to remember here that we need to multiply two by a number of angles in interiorly a triangle so in this case 180 degrees times two because we have two triangles so what is the total angles interiorly 
on a quadrilateral which means here that it is 360 degrees which is what we determined on our previous slide right here so if we do the same pattern for a pentagon which in this case here are five sides we have five sides and once we do that and we determine the number of triangles which is not only one right there but from the same edge to the next edge right there and we count the number of triangles in here we notice that we have one two and three and we've actually determined the number of triangles to be in this case be equal to three and once we multiply our 180 by three triangles we're going to find the sum of the interior angles of a poly pentagon sorry to be equal to 540 degrees and finally for a hexagon if we do the same thing and we count the number of triangles we recognize that to be four and in this case the total interior angles in a hexagon is going to be equal to 720 degrees so in this case now recognizing the slope of a line or the slope y intercept form of a line and applying that to this table and data that we've collected our goal is to create a formula that will be used to show the relationship between the sum of the interior angles and most importantly the number of sides of that particular polygon so that we'll be able to just play with the formula in any given question right away so in here we notice our y to represent the sum of the interior angles our m is to find the change in y divided by the change in x so in here once we see that we have that taken care of our change of y is what we're going to start off with and in this case we're going to go 316 minus 180 which gives us positive 180 and then the same thing is applied to 540 minus 360 and the next one is 720 minus 540 that gives us our change in y to be the same which is in this case positive 180 degrees so therefore since we have our change of y to be equal to positive 180 degrees and we notice that our change in x is actually the number of triangles change which in this case is just positive one we are actually going to come to the conclusion that our in this case the angle slope relationship with the number of triangles is actually equal to 180 degrees x plus b is equal to y but now take note here that we need to find b which means we just need to pick one point on that table which in this case is just picking our first particular polygon which is a triangle you can pick any other polygon right here but we're going to pick the triangle we're going to pick the number of triangles that makes a triangle to be one for our x and our angle sum interiorly to be equal to 180 degrees therefore if you put that into the original equation which is y equals 180x plus b to find b our b actually gives us zero so therefore our final equation in here is y is equal to 180 degrees x but take note here that x here is actually representing the number of triangles and it's difficult to actually address sh different shapes if you're not given the shape specifically or the number of sides usually in questions you'll be given the number of sides so you want to play around with that and therefore in this case to express x in terms of the number of sides which is represented as n in here what we have to do is notice that x is equal to n minus 2 going from x to n which is the number of sides what we see is we are going from 1 to 3 which means you are going by or two steps to get to three so one two three and the same thing applies to four and two for quadrilateral from three to five which is a pen tagon and from four to six so we have that pattern going on right here to be the number of sides 
minus 2 will give us the number of triangles. So therefore, if you put that particular x expression into your y equals 180 degrees x, you're going to automatically get your golden standard formula to determine the number of sides if given or if not given, sorry, or determine the sum of the interior angles if the number of sides is given. So if you are given any number of sides, like for example, n to be equal to 8, so you have 8 sides, if you put 8 into that formula, you will always get the sum of the interior angles in that particular case right there. So remembering that actually comes into the big idea question, which in this case is case 1. And what we see here is that we're given a regular 12 gun and a regular 12 gun means that in this case all sides are equal, all interior angles are equal, all exterior angles are equal. So remembering that in this case and remembering the formula, we actually first have to find the interior angles of a 12 gun, which in this case we remember that we generate a formula and we're going to use the formula which is y equals 180 in the bracket n minus 2. So where we notice that the sum of the interior angles is equal to y and n is equal to the number of sides, which in this case in the question is 12, we can actually put 12 for n in that particular equation and we'll determine what y is and our y is noticed to be 1800 degrees which is actually our sum of the interior angles. But take note here that we need to find one interior angle in that particular shape in order for we to find the other exterior angle. So in here, we need to find a measure of one interior angle. In this case, once you remember that in this case, F in here is the interior angle is equal to the sum of interior angles divided by the total sides and once you have that taken care of we know that with the sum of the interior angle is 1800 degrees and with number of sides to be 12 in this case f is equal to 150 degrees so this particular angle f here is actually 150 degrees everywhere around each line that are connected to each other and for that specific particular angle there which is 150 degrees we can then determine what e is in here and e which is the space that is the exterior angle we notice that it is just a straight line which in this case is the 180 degrees which is the angle in a straight line but we are given only one angle which is represented as f to be 150 which means that here we'll have to subtract 150 from 180 degrees in order for we to find e because we know that that is the angle on a straight line so therefore e is recognized to be equal to 30 degrees and this is a fact right there that is awesome so once we have that determined already that is the answer right away now the next question is what if now you're given a specific lines and angles given and in here we're asked to find an unknown angle here which is represented as x which is the angle d e c solution here is to be able to look at this particular figure and highlight the facts around this particular figure so the fact here is that based on our observation we see that we have two lines that are parallel to each other which is the line a b and the line f c so if those two lines are parallel which is recognized as that right here and we have a transverse line which is the line d c in this particular case we can actually create a z pattern which creates or links alternate angles together so that is pretty much awesome to have at the back of our minds the second here thing here is that we notice a circle that is around the d point right there so that circle tells us that those two spaces angles are actually equal 
so in this case the angle e d b which is the top right there and the other angle there which is c d e those angles are actually equal to each other which is represented as that little circle right there or around those two regions right there so in this case next one here is recognizing that there is a triangle type that is called an isosceles triangle an isosceles triangle is recognized to be two sides that are actually equal to each other in a three-sided shape so in this case we recognize that line de which is showing a little stroke line at the middle is equal to line e c which has the same one number stroke line on that particular line right there so in this case since those two lines have one stroke line on each other it means that those two lines are equal to each other therefore it means that the angles that is opposite to those lines which in this case is that particular as shown in this case angle EDC which is shown right there and the other angle ECD which is shown right here they are actually equal to each other so in here we're seeing a panel we're seeing a step step by step process by which we can be able to finally figure out what x is first step is find the alternate angle and from the alternate angle since we know that on the other side two sides split apart to be equal we can determine the angle inside the triangle one and then using the isosceles pattern we can figure out that the opposite angle is actually also equal which means that in this case finally since we know that the sum of the interior angles in a triangle is equal to 180 degrees as recognized from not only the formula but from the fact in of the case we can actually determine what that particular missing x is which is the measure angle d e c so where we have that recognized for x we can actually determine what the missing x value is which means we subtract the sum of those angles inside a triangle which is equal are equal to each other from 180 degrees and we'll determine what x is so now let's solve this particular problem based on our observations so we have our a b line to be parallel to fc line and therefore dc is transverse to each other therefore we have to create our pattern which is alternate angle through that particular z pattern so therefore in this case if we have the angles in this case fcd to be equal to the angle cdb in this case 30 degrees is actually the answer for that particular angle that has that particular pattern right there to be equal to 30 degrees which is c d b so once we have that taken care of our next point is to use that relationship to determine the knot which is that circle right there of that particular angle for that particular triangle so c shows relationship between two angles which in this case since 30 degrees is equal to the sum of angle c d e and e d b we can actually split it into two equal parts in order to find one specific part so in this case it is equal to two circles in this case equal to 30 degrees and therefore if we divide both sides by two we actually get our circle to be equal to 15 degrees so 50 degrees is that particular angle that is related to that specific angle of the triangle so once we have that taken care of 
our next step is now to recognize our four step which involves the isosceles triangle because we've gotten into the triangle region right there so since one angle of that particular isosceles triangle is actually represented as the angle c d e therefore we've known our angle of two the two angles in the isosceles triangle which in this case is 15 degrees for not only c d e but also based on our fact right there using fact 5 and 6 combined our uh, e d c angle which is 15 degrees is also equal to the angle d c e which is 15 degrees because this is an isosceles triangle which means all two sides and the opposite two angles are equal to each other so therefore in this case to determine what x is we subtract the sum of the two given sides which are 15 degrees and 15 degrees which gives us 30 degrees subtract it from 180 degrees because we know that in a three-sided figure polygon all sum of interior angles is equal to 180 degrees that is why we're using 180 degrees therefore x in this case is going to give us 150 degrees so that is the final answer for that particular question and in here the key fact is that we are able to combine first relationships between sides and angles involving the z pattern or alternate angles and then our next step here was to be able to recognize that we have an isosceles triangle which means that two angles are equal and once we have that we'll come to the conclusion that since we have three-sided polygon which is a triangle we can actually determine an unknown value that is missing x to be equal to 180 degrees minus the two given angles based on our analysis right there so all these great skills just coming from the three skills that we introduced were used to determine any angle or any next time sides in our next video so all the same thanks for following me through this trailer appreciate it quite a long video please if you want to go through this process please don't hesitate to reach out to me either by email or by google meets by that way i can get to you and i'll give you anything that you need in this particular process right there so don't forget to practice always and please follow these practice activities and the next video we're going to talk about quadrilateral triangle oh sorry quadrilateral polygons and the relationships not only with that but also determining sides either using Pythagorean theorem and all those skills that are needed in this particular course all the same stay smart and always believe in yourselves